Hey, everybody, this is Eric Gales, and you jamming out with Sonic Perspective. My name is Eric Gales. Any questions? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. My guest today is the raw dog himself, Mr. Eric Gales. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you for having me. This is so awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And uh, we have a whole new album to discuss called Crown. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, I know you caught COVID in 2020, and so did your wife. I mean, how are you doing health-wise these days? Health-wise, we've recovered, man. We we have recovered, man, and and things are things are you know health-wise is okay for us. You know, we're just waiting on uh, this wave to slow back down again, man, so we can you know get out. And of course, you know, I'm ready to get out. I mean, I I have a, a release party on the 28th in my hometown and uh, with my good friend Joe Bonamassa and my other good friend Mr. Mono Neon, and and they're gonna join me. Uh, on that day, cool. that's going to be a great day, you know, but I just, I want it, I want it to be done as safe as possible. So, you know, with that being said, we're, 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 we're recovering, man. We're, we're, we're going to try to get back out there and, 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 and run and run and run and try to run the world the best way we can, man, you know, in the, in the, in the safest way as possible. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me about the album, uh, Crown. It seems to me you're determined to reclaim your place in the Blues Pantheon. Well, <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, 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 i'm gonna say yes and no because mm. to me i've never really you know i if anybody know me they know that i am one of the most humble guys in the world and i don't brag and i don't you know like to really talk about myself and you know just being able to be on stage and connect and swap energy positive energy with a crowd is one of the most highest feelings that i could ever have in my life if that constitutes claiming uh the top seat and a pantheon then okay but <laughs> for me but for me it's claiming the power that is manifested uh from a swapping of positive energy back and forth uh, in a live setting for me, that is the highest peak that, you know, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, aim and strive for. And, you know, the rest of it, I'm not going to throw it away. Of course, I'll, you know, try and, uh, you know, sit in the seat as long as I'm allowed to sit in the seat or as long as the big man upstairs say, you know what, a young man claim your seat and sit there and uh that if, if, if it's that way then so be it but you know uh it's it's the world that is creating that sort of you know that sort of uh narrative and I, i'm not mad at it i'm not going against the grain but i am definitely letting it be known that my you know my eyes are on a on a site much higher than 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 that when it comes to that you know just as long as i'm able to bear witness to a power that comes to me from a higher being and i'm able to give it out to somebody else man i think that's claiming the best seat in the world that's awesome and i love how you start the <laughs> album with my name is eric gills any questions uh on the song death of me <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. A, it sounds I, you know, like you're putting the cards in the table and saying, you know, this is my game. You know, are you into it? So yeah. now, now you're right about that. You are. You are right. You are right. With that being said, um, <laughs> how can how can I answer your first question like I did and <laughs> start my record <laughs> and start my record by saying, you know, my name is Eric Gale. You know, yeah. Uh, here, here it is. But the whole meat and potatoes behind starting the record like that is that, you know, me and Joe talked about it. And it's, it's, it's a good bit of the world that know who I am. But at the same time, it's a good bit of the world that don't know who I am. So 
I thought that it was the best way to do that was to put it the first thing that you hear when the record comes on. My name is Eric Gale. Do y'all <laughs> got any questions? And then before you get a question, the music plays, and that that's what answers every question that you might have throughout the whole record. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love how it starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank and, you, uh, Thank you. and on the second song, uh, The Storm, and also on Survivor, uh, to a certain extent, you talk about racism. And, uh, and I think this, at least The Storm, was written on the aftermath of the George Floyd case. Um, yes. you feel that racism still affects those around you, your immediate family, your friends, etc. Man, I, I feel that it affects them and myself. So so much so that I want to I want to break this down in these terms. Mm -hmm. Take the take the guitar away from me. Take that guitar. Take the fact that people know that that's what I do for a living. And that's what they're fascinated by. Just think about if that wasn't what people quote unquote, give me a pass for from the other race to like who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. may not particularly even care for the color of my skin, but you tolerate it because you like what I do and how I sound when I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, here's the other part. I said, take that away. When a cop pulls me over, they have no idea that I play guitar or I have a fan base out there. Now, there has been times that I've been pulled over and cops did know who I was. And mm -hmm. turns out that I wound up giving them an autograph before they pulled <laughs> off. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but that, yeah. don't ha that don't happen every day. Every cop ain't greeting you kind and nice and cool especially when you're my skin color. So not only am I concerned about that for me, but I'm concerned about that for any minority, anybody of color that, you know, may not get the pass that another race predominantly gets when, you know, they're in the face of uh, a superior, if you will, and these sort of things arise, you know, it's just, and, and, and the, my whole purpose for putting that out there, because there is an element of a uh, 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 particular uh, sect of this world that have no idea that those are the type of things that us in this race go through. And half of, half of the problem, I would say, is not their fault, because they don't know. But if you got the opportunity to find out and you're not listening, then it is your fault. I fully agree. Um, and, yeah. and I, I love yeah. what you do in the, in the chorus there where with uh, how can you love what I do, but hate who I am. Right. So man, yeah. how can you do how, how is that possible? How is it possible? Yeah. You know, I just, I don't understand that part. You know, it's yeah. just like the time that, that, uh, that, uh, that anchor woman told LeBron James to just shut up and dribble. It's the same exact thing because someone tried to tell me to just shut up and play. And play. So I'm going to tell you that that's basically how some of that content in the storm became to be that material for that song. Right. You understand? Right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about Joe Bonamassa. I know you've been friends for a while and you met at the beginning of your careers, uh, but how did the invitation to produce your album come about? Man, we were on the cruise, on his cruise, and we had played, and I don't know if you saw that footage of me and him on the Battle of John Henry. I that, did. You know, went viral. And, uh, you know, before it was over, man, I said, told my wife, I said, man, I'm going to put him on the spot and I'm going to ask him in front of a thousand people if he <laughs> produced my record. And uh, if he says no, he's going to have to tell me no in front of a thousand people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but... I couldn't have made him say yes to something that he didn't already want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and we buddies, we're friends. And he said, of course. And he said, you know, my fee isn't cheap. And I said, of course, just let me know how much it is. And he said, all I charge is two Diet Cokes. <laughs> and I went to my room. I went to my room 
and I came back with two Diet Cokes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was prepaid. Was man. Was it was prepaid, man. Yeah. We shook and, you know, but we've been buddies. We've known each other for almost 30 years. We met when we were teenagers. And uh, he opened up for me because he was in the band Bloodline at the time. And I was with the Eric Gales band. And uh, he opened up for me in Huntsville, Alabama. And I said, damn, this kid is playing his ass off. Damn. <laughs> and then, you know, we met and, uh, you know, we went, I, my, my route went down a path of, you know, drugs and, you know, almost death and jail and prison and all this sort of stuff. And he is, he, Took a he 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 put he took a stranglehold to the industry, and 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 done and, and is doing very well for himself. And I had yeah. always been very admired. I admired and very inspired. And he'd always been someone that was very close to my heart. But you know, some people have to you know love from a distance because I was so chaotic within myself that you know it's just a, a miracle that you know I made it this far without killing myself and I got another <laughs> opportunity to ri to rise above the ashes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is part of the, 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 the strength in my story that is making this record of such a uh, uh, resurrection, if you will, or uh reinvention or however you want to put it. it once you know the, the backstory and you hear the music, that's what really makes, I believe that this be so powerful. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys got to reconnect, you know, at a better place in your life. And I think uh, the duel between you guys on I Want My Crown is, it reminded me of Apollo versus Rocky, in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we uh, had a lot of fun. Yeah. And, oh, I bet it was as fun to record as it is for us to watch the video as well. It, yeah. it was. It was, man. We, we have every time we get together, man, it's like... we. So, and what the world don't know, it's not, we're, we're never looking at it as a competition. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're having a conversation with each other, you know, and, uh, that, that's all we're having fun, like two kids in the sandbox and, uh, you know, it's, it, it, and, but the world is getting this grand Apollo versus, you know, Rocky <laughs> sort of thing, you know what I mean? There you go. And, uh, it's all good, man. It's, it's all in good fun, man. Yeah. Uh, tell me about Too Close to the Fire. I hear an influence of Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb in there. Am I right in saying that? You would be in, a, in, in the right direction uh, <laughs> in one sense. And, but at the same time, it's, it's all sorts of, uh, you know, references and in, inspirations and influences that come up and make the genetic build of a song. And, you know, that is one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, ba basically, it was just, it talks about, you know, I, 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 like I was, you know, I said in the interview just prior to you, you know, what made me any different from George Floyd? You know, what mm -hmm. made that scenario that happened to him could have been me. You know what I mean? Uh, it could have been me. And in that instance, you know, as a black man in this, you know, we're, I'm too close to the fire. You know, I'm, I was, and it's also another interpretation that, in my drugging days, I was too close to the fire. I was too right. close to death. You know, I, it's several different interpretations that go along with, you know, the powerful aspect of the meaning of that song, Too Close to the Fire. But yeah, you, you hit the hammer on the head a little bit with Comfortably Numb. Yeah, yeah, I definitely noticed yeah. that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Take Me As I Am is another cool song, uh, one of my favorites on the album, and it features your wife, LaDonna Gales, on vocals. And uh, I know you two collaborate a lot, right? Uh, how important it is for you to have your wife so embedded in your career? Man, she's my partner, man. She's the one who really, you know, had, she was the one who pushed me into the mirror and mm. said, look at yourself, man. Look at yourself, man. Tell yourself you love yourself, man. And you can, you know, there is a thing out there called life. And, you know, for quite some time, you have not been living it. And I'm here to help you know that, you know, I love you for the human being that you are. Put the guitar away. It's your soul and your heart that draw me to marry you. And I want you to see the greatest things that can happen to you in this thing called life without any substances. And 
I believe that once you really take hold of loving yourself, you have no idea what is going to be waiting for you. And wow, I can't believe I'm still in amazement at, at the things that has opened up since, you know, two days ago, marked five and a half years clean for me. So I thought never that that would have ever happened, you know, but mm. it come from the, the, the strength of a very strong, powerful woman that put that had to be taken through the fire. She was very close to the fire dealing with somebody like me all that time, but she never gave up on me. And I would never, ever lose sight of that. Now, on the musical side, she's always been that way, but she's always wanted and chose to be in the background. But it took quite some time to convince her by me and Joe that you should step out and we should do something different. And we all know, Joe and I know about how passionate she is and she's a believer in, you know what, if you can't take me as I am, then it's your loss. And, mm. you know, such and such, this, this and that, and that song fit her. And you're the second interviewer today that has said and spoke about that song. It's crazy. So evidently, I think we did something right by <laughs> incorporating having her be the lead on that song. That's exactly why I said all this time she's been singing background vocals for me. Now it's my time to sing background vocals for her. Keep sipping your sweet tea to the sounds of my number one soul <laughs> sister. And, you know, I think she, <laughs> I think she did a wonderful job. And uh, I think, I think, I think it's going to turn some heads off yeah, of this record. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you play guitar left-handed like I do, uh, and you're right-handed like me, but you don't reverse the strings. Your fat E is at the bottom. Uh, how did you develop that style? Uh -huh. I mean, from memory, only Albert King did, did that before you. Yeah, Albert King, you got Doyle Bramwell, you got uh, uh, Otis, Otis Rush, you got, you know, a few, but man, I and my brothers, my brothers uh, were playing oh. that way. I picked up the guitar at four years old, and that was how I picked it up, and I never looked back. And, you know, and, and I, off to the races, you know, mm. I, 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 for the longest I thought I was playing the right way, you know. <laughs> and to me, I was playing the right way, you know, until I found out that, you know, hey, man, there is no right or wrong way. You know what I mean? It's what works for you. And, uh, hey, it was quite some time before it even, you know, was informed to me <laughs> that, you know, the world was fascinated by how it was that I was playing because it was so different from, you know, even Jimi Hendrix. It, it, like people say, you know, as you know what I'm talking about, you know, you play like Jimi Hendrix. I was like, no, I don't. No. <laughs> I do not play like Jimi Hendrix. It's different. We yeah. hold the guitar the same way, but no, he flipped, you know, and then, and then you have to explain all that and everything and, such and such, this and this and that, you know, but and at the same time, I have come up with a quote that is not taking nothing away from Jimi Hendrix because he is one of the, he is the most impactful artist, guitar player, songwriter that has ever graced this planet as for who he was and his contribution to the art of guitar playing and and, 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 and and its entirety. But, there is a but, I am not trying to be the next Jimi Hendrix. I am simply trying to be the first Eric Gale. That's all I'm trying to do. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> and good. I noticed even in the signature models, you don't reverse like the knobs or anything like that. It's it's actually a, like a, a right-handed guitar with uh, so on, the, because, on the other side. Exactly. Because that, that's what I that's what I grew up playing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and uh, everyone asks you about your playing, but let me ask you about your singing. It seems to me that singing and playing came naturally to you. Uh, what were your main influences it, it, on vocals? How did you find your style? Man, coming up out of church, man, was a lot of uh, of the gospel. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of that, and 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 mixed and blend with. Uh, blue singers, uh, John Lee Hooker, man, Muddy Waters, you know, all these mm. cats, Albert King, and, and you take some of the modern stuff, you know, you got D'Angelo, and you got a lot of, uh, you know, 
modern artists that, you know, I am, some of the names are slipping me right now, but you got those, you got some gospel cats, you got your Diedrich Haddons, you've got, uh, you know, all kinds of, you got uh, 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 Jonathan McReynolds, you got, you know, it's just all kinds of insane vocalists and people yeah. out there that just make me say, wow. And, and, you know, so I pull from a lot of different ranges. You got Moonchild, you know, I'm very, I'm a big fan of Moonchild and, and, and it's, it's just insane, man. You know, I just take and pull from everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And uh, you started at a time when guitar shredders were at the top of their game. Guys like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Paul Gilbert. I'm curious as to why you never play with these guys, like on tour or on an album. I think there's been some workshops that you played with these guys, right? I have. Yeah. I have. I just, I, actually, I just texted with Greg Howe today, as oh, a cool. matter of fact. Uh, yeah. You know, but yeah, man, those guys, uh, I, they are part of the, you know, ingredients that make up, you know, several things that I'm, like I was speaking about, that I'm influenced by. And yeah. uh, I'm glad you mentioned those, you know, because those are not always talked about when you hear my my, my influences and stuff like that. But yeah, people that know, know that. I'm influenced by a whole lot of things and a whole lot of people, and they are definitely in that circle. Yeah, Eric Johnson as well. You're friends with Eric Johnson, right? I think Eric Johnson is one of my best friends, dude. Like, yo, yeah. like, you got Eric Johnson, you got Monty Montgomery, you got, you know, all kinds of, you know, AJ Gent, you got, you know, Kingfish, you got Derek Trucks, you yeah. know, Doyle <laughs> Bramhall, you know, it's just and Isaiah Sharkey. Jubu Smith, all of these cats, man. You know, it's all way across the board. You know, you know, Robert Randolph, everybody, man. I'm just, you know, there's no limit to, you know, who 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 I'll catch the spirit from. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. that's just how it goes. Yeah. And uh we spoke about being left-handed. You played in a band where everyone is left-handed, Penny Gills Prigent. Uh and almost right. eight, yeah, almost eight years now after the second album. Do you think there will be a third one eventually? I think there will be, man. I mean, you know, I think there will be, and I think we will eventually tour off oh, of cool. uh, that off of that material. You know, let me let let me let the life of Crown do its thing. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I think some some serious doors are about to be open from you know the release of this record uh, on the twenty eighth, the new single coming out on the twenty eighth, stand up off of the record, and uh, you know. Uh, Keb Mo is was a very significant uh, person that ha had an input on this record, and uh, man, I just think this—I I honestly think this is my time. And, Absolutely, uh, we're yeah. going to have—we're going to have—we're going to have a very, very awesome, you know, journey making it happen. And everybody that I've been speaking to, as far as interviews, there's they keep they keep mentioning the word Grammy, and uh, oh, wow. I, I, you know, I. I'm going to receive that. And, uh, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, of course it won't be up for Grammy till next year, but I am, uh, you know, rooting on, you know, friends of mine that are in the category that is to, you know, in the category nominated for Grammy, uh, for the Grammys this year, such as Kingfish, such as, you know, Joe Bonamassa, Steve Cropper and, you know, uh, I think uh, Fantastic Negrito, I think they're in, some, they're in there somewhere and, you know, I'm rooting for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I just want them to know I'm coming next year. I'm coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You deserve it. Man. Well, Eric, I remember distinctively the first time I saw Sign of the Storm come up on MTV. You were 16 at the mm -hmm. time and so was I. So I just want to say from a journalist to an artist and from a fan you know, to an idol. Thank you so much for the interview and all the best with the new album, The Crown. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, this is going to be perfect timing because in three minutes, I got the last interview that I got to do. And uh, it's going to be awesome, man. Dude, you have truly... I just want to show my wife your background that you got. Look at his background. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> As he said hey to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate you, man. And make me look good and make me sound good on this interview. Will do. All the best, Eric. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, my friend. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Okay, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed this interview with Eric Gales. 
Please support us by commenting on this video, giving us a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, the interview is available on many other platforms like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. We encourage you to check it out anywhere and to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We're going to finish off with the song I Want My Crown from the new album of Eric Gales, Crown. Take care and rock on! <laughs> people in the back I don't know if y'all can hear me real good but it's time to step in the ring me and you let's get it Joe